Good morning. My name is Latoya Conway Hampton. You've tuned in to Two Lifestyles Living Life After Abuse, and I am your host. Today's conversation is the continuance of last week, where we talked about uh, Department of Children and Family Services, um, the child welfare process. And the conversation we're going to have today is about the transition that it takes for the children to reunify home and some of the feelings and emotions and some of the trials and tribulations that it takes as a mother regaining custody of your children. So the normal process is, is if there is a large amount of children, the children are replaced very slowly because it can be very overwhelming. Think about it. If you've gotten maybe nine of your children removed out of your home, and they've been gone for a period of, of to two years, and then all of a sudden they just put nine children back in your home at a, all at once, it's overwhelming. I remember feeling like, okay, you took all seven of them at one time. I don't need you to issue my children out to me one at a time. But what I learned was the benefit of them um, spreading out the reunification process with the children. So originally been gone for up to two years, um, and then bringing them in a little bit at a time. The first process is, is to make sure that parents don't get overwhelmed because you've spent up to two years alone. Maybe you had a lot of visits, seen the kids a lot. You may even had overnights, but it's still different from having all of the children in the home. So our process went as, uh, as follow. The first 14 months, I regained custody of my two daughters. And because at that point in time, I was living parenting out of guilt, as soon as they came home, it was around tax season. And I remember I got those taxes. I had a, a nice amount of money. And I just remember because I parenting out of guilt, everything they asked for, I would be like, okay, okay, okay. I spent like $2,800 in the mall on the girls. Just buying this, buying that. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. Let's take pictures. Let's buy clothes because I was parenting out of guilt. I wasn't thinking that in a couple of months that I would have all of these other children that would be returning home and that I needed to be able to have an income to take care of them or some money set aside to be able to, you know, meet their needs. And I think that with the girls, when they first came home, I felt so bad that they was in the system. Everything they wanted, everywhere they wanted to go. You know, I just started doing some things that I wouldn't normally do because I felt so guilty that my kid had even been, the girls had even been a part of the system. And I think for them, the process with them was very, you know, I was scared. I was scared to parent. I was scared not to, uh, I was scared to discipline them. I was afraid to be a mom after they came home because they had been detained. And my fear was, is that they was gonna be removed again. And after a while, they began to understand that they can manipulate me because of my fear of them uh, being removed. So they would do little things like, um, when my sons came home, I, I remember this conversation, one of my boys was like, I wanna, um, he asked me for something and I denied him that ask. And his thought was, well then I wanna call my social worker. And when he used to say that, I want to call my social worker, I started to get bubbles in my stomach. I started to feel really, really sick. Like, oh my God, they're going to take my kids again. What am I going to do? And so the first six months of them being home was really, really trial and error. But it was more of me learning my boundaries, utilizing all of the parenting skills that I've learned, doing all of the things that I needed to do. That was a big process that I needed to do with the children. And so I felt like I was afraid to parent. I was afraid to discipline. I was afraid to be the mother that I've learned to become. And so um, after he was like, I'm gonna call my social worker, I kept getting scared. Well, what did I do wrong? And what can I do different? And how can I help? And then after he kept saying it, I was like, I'm gonna dial her number for you. You want me to call her for you? Then when he realized I was no longer afraid and that was no longer a tool that he can use against me, then things got better and easier for me. Then I feel comfortable enough to parent. There is something that happens with that reunification process with the children. Another challenge for me with that was, they was not, um, I was not financially able to buy them everything that they was accustomed to getting while they was in foster care. Now the foster parents get a stipend. They get a stipend to 
buy the children something and then they get a, a, a stipend to make sure that, you know, their kids are uh, met. Their needs are met, excuse me. And I have to tell you, there's not enough money that a foster parent get to invite the children in the home. They have to have a, far, a heart for the children in order to say, okay, come on in. Because they don't pay them enough to put up with some of the things that I know that my children was going through. They was going through a lot. All they ever knew was mom. Everywhere I went, my children was with me. My children had behavior problems because of the challenges that I had. And so I knew that um, I needed to do something different when, they, when I began to parent them, when they was reunified. And so this one particular day that stands out for me the most was, uh, it was uh, October 31st, it was Halloween. And some of my kids came home and they were on medication for their hyperactivity. And this particular kid was just so off the hook because I didn't give him his meds. And I'm thinking they just want the, they just want to give them meds because they want to get a D rate and they want extra money. Well, the kids definitely was traumatized. They had been through so much. Not to mention, I didn't have a set of good parenting skills when my kids were at home. So their behavior was off the hook. They didn't have disciplines. They didn't have rewards. They didn't know about logical consequences because I didn't know about them. I didn't know about natural versus logical consequences. So my kids were off the hook. They knew how to manipulate me. So when they came back home and I had taken at least three or four parenting classes, I had a different set of skills, not to mention that I was sober. So that process for us was, it was like button heads. They wanted to do what they was used to doing. I wanted to do the things that I learned to do. And after a period of time, we got get together, we began to mesh those skills, them understanding that mom's not gonna change, mom's no longer drinking or using, I am no longer the same person. And, and I have to tell you, it was very challenging. It was very challenging. One of my sons was calling me Latoya because his foster parent was his mom. I didn't know how to receive that. It was really, really hard in the beginning. But the more I began to practice the skills that I've learned, and the more I allowed my children to have their own personal experiences, the healthier our family got. Not to mention, I got in a relationship with other people and because I was in a other I was in a, a relationship with the man that I'm with now, which is my husband, that he was able to be the harmony in the house that I needed. Because when things was crazy and chaotic, I could talk to him and he can say, Well, have you thought about this? Have you looked at it this way? Think about what the kids been through. We spent a lot of time away from each other and I spent a lot of time in an unhealthy relationship. So all of the skills that I had, they weren't healthy. And so the process for rebuilding a relationship with my children, it was long, it was drawn out, it was painful, it was hard, it was dark, it was cold, and it was lonely. The lonely nights, what I think about rebuilding a relationship with my kids is that they went through so much in foster care. And I had to get over the guilt of the fact that they were detained from me in the first place. And then the second place, I had to learn to forgive myself for all of the mistakes that I made in order to move to the side where I can now practice these skills that I was taught in parenting class, especially the logical versus natural consequence. Because everything that happened, they would either get a whipping or I would take their stuff and then never get it back. What well, the law says that you're not able, you're not allowed to whip your kids. You can hit your kids with an open hand and that don't leave marks. Or if you're court ordered not to provide corporal punishment, period, you're not allowed to, to even spank them on their butt. So it depends on what your court orders are, period, overall. And so when they came home, I had a court order not to provide corporal punishment. So you have a woman who was from the streets, from South Central, who was raised in a house with getting whippings, who was raised with parents that used, raised their voice to communicate to me uh, their former discipline to learning all these different strategies in parenting classes. Now, how do I rebuild this relationship with my children? I had to learn that they need more hugs. Hugs is free, it's non-painful. Well, sometimes it's painful if you're not used to hugging, but uh, hugs are not painful. I also had to realize that these kids had, they went through their own trauma and foster care. Could you imagine, just follow me here, could you imagine being in home with your mom every day, no matter how good, bad, or indifferent the house was, but all of a sudden, one day, your mom is removed and your dad's removed. And now you're with absolutely nothing, nothing that's familiar, no one that you know, all of these different rules, that's trauma. 
And then they wanna know why kids act up in foster care. Well, you just removed everything that meant the most to me, no matter how harmful it was, it was what I'm used to. It is my parents, it is my loved ones. So when I began to look at the trauma that my kids had in foster care, excuse me, it made it easier for me to embrace them in my home with all of the chaos and all of the drama that we had going on in our home. And what just came to my forefront, once my, my he was at my fiance at the time, once my fiance moved in the house, he said to me, you guys like this every day? And I'm thinking like every day. It's like, yeah, 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 just crazy and chaotic. But through the years, through the process of rebuilding our relationship, my house become the, became very still as much as it could be because I'm still not, I'm not a person that's very still. It, it, it has became very still, very calm, very structured very organized and very loving, but we had to do family meetings. Those family me meetings helped my kids recognize that they had a voice. They do have to fall in line, but they have a voice. We taught our kids leadership skills when we had to rebuild our relationship because they had been in foster care for a period of time. Now they learn how to be a leader. Now they learn how to, because they was chore checkers. So then they began to check the chores of the other children, which gave them a sense of leadership st skills and a sense of identity as people. Because being in foster care, sometimes our children come out not feeling worthy, not feeling loved, not feeling respected. And so I wanted to have this conversation with you today about that process of reunifying. It's hard, you guys, and if you've ever got your children detained, you know that there's some trauma that they've experienced. But I wanna tell you that with love and respect and consistency, and house rules and regulations. They will always make changes. You guys can be the family that you've always wanted to be. And I have to tell you also, since my kids been home uh, from the system, it's been about 20 years, my children, we are closer, we are better together than we ever was apart. My life is much better since child welfare rescued me and my children from the chaos and the drama. So when you get upset and you think about child welfare mess up my family, it sucks, it does suck, and sometimes the families are, uh, are, are worse off. But in my case, I wasn't worse off. And most of the cases that I've been blessed to serve, they was not worse off. It felt like that in the beginning of the process, but at the end, when the parents can do better, then you can also parent your children better. So what are you willing to do to regain custody of your kids, to rebuild a relationship with your children, to keep a relationship with your children? So thank you so much. My name is Latoya Conway Hampton. I'm your host and thank you for joining Living Life After Abuse. Have a wonderful day.